Hey, what's going on everyone? No Zoop for you here, and we are on the last of the Commander Skills video tutorials. That leaves aircraft carriers. I know everybody's favorite ship line, right? Everybody's favorite class. Still, it is a class in the game, and it is something that needs to be covered because the Commander Skills have completely been reworked for aircraft carriers as well. There are a lot of different commander skills out there so you need to know what there is and what they do so I'm gonna go through each one of them like I have for each other class like I did for destroyers battleships and cruisers it's been interesting because we were about a week into this now and players are finding out that some things are viable some things aren't Deadeye has completely changed the aspect of battleships, and a lot of players aren't happy about it, but you know what? We adapt and we overcome, right? That That's life, and I guess we can apply it to this game, so we just need to make the best with what we have right now. So we're going to take a look at the captain skills, excuse me, the commander skills. I, I don't know why I always call them captain skills. I mean, captain, commander, kind of the same thing, right? I mean completely different ranks but anyhow uh, we're gonna take a look at it on the Enterprise because it's a ship that's probably getting a lot of use right now in the tier 8 rank battles I would do something like the Kaga but I, I don't feel it's necessary because the Kaga has some sturdy planes and it has an unlimited amount it seems like it's a lot easier to get to play deplaned on the Enterprise if you're not careful so we're gonna roll with the Enterprise we're gonna check out the commander skills we're gonna walk through them and we're gonna do that right now so here we go we're gonna go through each line one by one and these are a little different than the other classes. These are different than destroyers and battleships and cruisers. On those, you might know that things are split between attack skills and defense skills. Well, there is one more type of skill for aircraft carriers, and that is support skills. And those are skills that can be used to assist your teammates, primarily with your fighters. So it's not split equally down the middle. It is primarily a lot of attack skills. A little bit fewer defensive skills and then moving on to support skills you get even less than that so we're gonna walk through these we're gonna start with the first one last gasp is your first skill it completely restores engine boost for the last attack flight of the aircraft carriers planes I generally don't use something like that this is something I find more important improved engine boost and it is a recommended skill this adds 5% to your squadron engine boost duration and I, I know a lot of you probably like me use boost while you're in an attack and that extra 5% might it might make the difference in being able to get a drop in or not uh, engine techie engine cooling consumable reload time decreased by 20% that's actually a pretty big decrease right there so we're gonna move on now to defensive skills air supremacy aircraft restoration time is decreased by 5% something also recommended and something i think might be worth taking direction center for fighters when an aircraft carrier's fighter consumable is activated an additional aircraft is launched kind of confused as why this is defensive and not support because it seems like support is something that this would fall under but i i guess I guess it counts as defense as well and I, I'm having a hard time understanding how supports not the same as defense uh, I, you know <laughs> I guess tomato tomato right moving on to search and destroy for your support skill extends the patrol radius of the patrol fighters and interceptor consumables this is also a good one if you like providing support to your destroyers I'm sure they would like that extra 10% envelope to be safe in so out of these right now, I'm just going to go ahead and take the improved engine boost just to start. Don't have to master it, so that's a nice thing. Moving on to your two-point skills. This this is where you start boosting your, your aircraft squadron's abilities. So you've got torpedo bomber attack skill. Uh, this decreases the arming distance by 10%, which means you can drop a lot closer to a target. This 
actually is a pretty good skill to have for certain classes of aircraft carriers. I can see it being used on something like uh, IJN carriers where you generally drop from a little further out. This gets you a little bit closer. This means you can drop closer to the ship and you run less of a risk of the torps not arming and actually causing damage. So uh, I'm, I'm not using an IJN carrier right now, so I might not use this. Moving on, we have Swift, Swift man, that's a tongue twister, right? Swift Fish. That's another attack skill. It increases your torpedo speed by 5%. No penalty there. No decrease in the duration of the torpedoes. Kind of like for destroyers. And that's actually pretty nice right there. Improved Engines attack skill increases your squadron speed by 2.5%. I don't think 2.5% is really enough to make an overall difference. There, there are other skills here that I find more important. Moving on to defensive skills, you have repair specialists. Repair consumable action time 10% plus 10% and the number of repair consumable charges is increased by one. As an aircraft carrier player, you may or may not want that. A lot of times, it's rare where you become in a situation where you're attacked early on. I, I mean, eh. I don't see this as something too important. So, I, I don't know. It's whether or not you want it. Uh, another defensive skill is Secondary Armament Expert. Decreases secondary battery loading time and increases continuous A damage and damage from A shell explosions. I, I kind of wonder what happened to the Graf Zeppelin with the rework, the Captain Skill rework, and if its secondaries are even viable anymore. I could see this being used for that ship if they are. Uh, if they're not, this is probably just a waste. So I don't see too many people taking that. Your uh, support skill right here, number of patrol fighters and interceptor consumable charges is increased by one. Uh, that, that actually can be pretty valuable, especially if you're scouting areas and trying to locate destroyers. Uh, being able to plunk in another one of those, that's, that's pretty good. So for me, it becomes a cross between that. I'm not using IJM, so I'm not going to take the torpedo bomber. I do like the idea of faster uh, torpedoes, though. So I'm probably going to take either this or patrol group leader. Uh... I like offensive capability, though, so I'm just going to stick with this for now. Moving on to your three-point skills. And uh, actually, let's... Uh, let, do, do we show the actual speed of the torpedoes? I, I can't remember if that's something that comes in here. Um, yes, aerial torpedo speed, 37 knots. So instead of 35 knots, it's 37 knots. Uh, arming distance, plus 19, though. Hold on one sec. The torpedo arming distance is increased when you use these, so it's 395 meters as opposed to 376. So that, that's not limiting the distance of your torpedoes, but it's changing the arming distance, and they don't tell you that right here. So just a little side note, you're going to have to drop from a little further out if you want to use these faster torpedoes, so... Pretty much the ability to gain any speed is somewhat negated, it would appear. So maybe we're not going to take those. We're going to bypass those completely. And you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna be a team player. I'm going to be a team player, and I'm going to help my team by selecting this so that I get more consumables for patrol fighters and interceptors. So, um, yes, altruistic, I'm a team player. Moving on to your three-point skills, Site Stabilization. So this is always a good one in my opinion. It makes all your aiming speeds quicker for each one of your squadron types. I can think that in most cases people are going to want that. But we'll see what else is here. Enhanced Armor Piercing Ammunition, AP Rocket Damage Increased by 3%, and Damage by AP Bombs Increased by 3%. Eh, I don't know if that 3% is really worth it. So let's, uh, the neat little thing you can do right here, like I said, you can go over here. Maximum bond damage is 4,900. With this, it goes up to 5,047. So your maximum bomb damage is increased by 147 hit points. 
I really don't think that's worth three skill points. I mean, if it was 5%, maybe. If it was 10%, definitely. But, eh, not for me. Demo Expert. Chances of HE rockets causing a fire on target, plus 1%. Uh, another measly 1%. HE bombs is increased by 5%, though. This really only mildly helps this ship because you only have the Hellcats and you've got AP bombers. So, you know what? I, I probably would pass on that as well. Moving on to your defensive three-point skills, continuous AA damage reduction of 10%. In my opinion, these are necessary. One thing you want to do is ensure that your ships survive, or excuse me, your planes survive. <laughs> so the toss-up comes between the plus 25 hit points per ship tier or your continuous AA damage reduction. I'm kind of thinking the hit points is going to be a good thing here. Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. So 1,400 hit points goes up to 1600 hit points so you get 200 additional hit points for your aircraft that is a pretty big increase in my op opinion and it's it's worth taking and when you've got something like uh who's, who's the captain not only not olaf kolzig um uh, who's the other player for the capitals why why can't i remember his name alex ovechkin alex when you take him as your commander and get that health boost uh, you know, that, that translates really good to this stuff because you get even more. Why can't I remember his name? Good God, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. All right, moving on to your support skill. Interceptor, patrol fighters consumable, is replaced by Interceptor. So, again, two different types of uh, planes to use. You've got patrol fighters. This is an interesting choice right here. Uh, I'm going to pass on it, though. I'm going to stick to... I'm going to stick to the survivability expert, and depending on what I pick next, I might swing back around and take site stabilization, because that's an important one as well, in my opinion. Moving on to your final four-point commander skills, you have bomber flight control. Increases the cruising speed of your bombers by 5%, and your skip bomber cruising speed is increased by 5% for those ships out there that use that. Uh, 5%? Cruising speed, that, uh, let's see what that increases this by. So, right now, cruising speed is 125 knots, and that means it gets boosted to 131 knots. That's not a huge difference right there, and I don't know that that is worth really using that, because chances are, when you get in range of something, you're going to be speed boosting anyway. So, probably pass on that. Proximity fuse uh, negates anti-torpedo protection by 10%, and really this means that you have a higher chance of causing more damage. If you're a ship that likes to sling a lot of torpedoes, this is probably very helpful. Might be worth taking. Close quarters expert, secondary battery firing range plus 20%, and maximum dispersion minus 30%. Does not work with my ship's configuration. This is another one of those Graf Zeppelin type things. If it's still viable, I don't know if it is or isn't. Enhanced aircraft armor. This is another one that I would probably take. Reduction of damage from a shell explosions. 25% decrease. And I, I have found with aircraft carriers, you want your planes to survive. You want to be able to do more than just one drop. So anything you can do to boost your plane survivability is a good thing. So I'm definitely going to take that. Hidden Menace. Ship's detectability range, minus 15%. Reload time of damage party, minus 20%. However, speed of returning air squadrons, minus 50%. Not worth it, in my opinion. You know, ch chances are, as an aircraft carrier, you're not going to be pushing towards till the end of the game anyways. Um, if it was the old style of aircraft carriers prior to the rework, yeah, I might think this is a little more important. Um, I mean, <clears throat> it might help. 12.7 kilometers, when you add this, it goes down to 10.8 kilometers. It just makes it harder for you to be found. But as we know, most carriers are going to sit in the back behind, behind an island or something else. So I don't know how much that's going to help. Last but not least, we have Enhanced Reaction Support Skill. With the Patrol Fighters or Interceptor Consumables activated, the time it takes to start attacking hostile aircraft is reduced by 80%. 
So your planes get there a little slower, and the action time is a little less, but your planes will jump on whatever attacks fairly quickly. Again, this is whether you want to give up points for things that are actually going to help you against targets other than enemy aircraft. So, really, you really want to get... If you pick this, you really want to be a team player, and that's your goal. So, <laughs> it kind of tells you what's going to happen to these skills right here. People are probably going to bypass them. Uh, what am I going to pick at this tier? Definitely enhanced armor. I've got that. That leaves me with nine points, so I'm definitely going to swing back around to the three-point skill and take that site stabilization to make things a little quicker. Still got six points left. So I could take a four and a two. Increase the squadron speed. Don't think so. Torpedo arming distance could mess with. Uh, aircraft restoration time. You know what? For this ship, I might take that just because you can lose planes and it, they, they don't come in as quickly as they do on the Kaga. So I'll take that one point skill right there. I'll take this continuous A damage reduction for a decrease of 10%. Again, because I want to keep these planes alive. That leaves me with two skill points still. So, this is just really where it comes down to personal preference. And I wonder if there's a penalty for the arming distance. Let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, torpedo bombers, it'll tell you, it'll highlight it in red. You know what? I, I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing any penalty from it. So, we'll just go ahead and take that. Master it. You're set. Those are all your skills for the new Aircraft Carrier Commander skills. It's what they do, what they are, and again, this is going to be... I, I think out of all the Commander skills we have, these are going to make less a difference than what you choose on a carrier, or excuse me, a cruiser, or a battleship, or even a destroyer. I think these, the impact on each of these, aside from a few of them, uh, like the site stabilization, and armor, I, I think really it just comes down to personal preference and what you want more than the other. But I, I really don't think it's going to affect how much damage you do overall or anything like that if you just go straight defense or straight support or straight offense. I, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, at least from what I can see. From what I can see. I mean, maybe you'll eke out a couple more hit points of, of damage when you use proximity fuse or enhanced armor piercing ammunition. But, I mean, we're talking just a few percentage points here. I mean, it's not like it's 10%. 10% makes a huge change. 3%, I mean, microscopic. And most players aren't going to notice it. So, just something to keep in mind. Anyhow, this is the loadout I went with. I don't know if it's going to work or not. We're going to give it a try. I've got it on the Enterprise. I'll probably play a few rounds of uh, Ranked with it, and we'll go from there. I might give you an update on it later, but I just want you to know what to expect with all this. Anyhow, thanks for watching. I might do individual ship loadouts in the future, depending if I can find some loadouts that I actually like and I think work really well. You already saw the Des Moines loadout, and that ship is now a DPM beast. There are other ships that are the same. I've, I've done really well with the Minotaur with certain loadouts, so we'll, we'll see. Maybe we'll get more of these in the future. Anyhow, everybody, thank you for watching. Hope you're doing wonderful. Take it easy. Best of luck with these new skills, and I'll talk to you all later. Zoop out.